Well, we should have got more seats, really. But uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, and thank you, everyone, for coming. My name's Dean Tyler. I'm the Global Head of Fixed Income at uh, Exotics Capital, um, a dedicated emerging market uh, global investment bank. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled here today to be uh, introducing an excellent delegation from Zimbabwe. For the second time, actually, we hosted a, a delegation uh, in New York this year, but um, this one's even more distinguished than the, uh, than the last one that, that, that uh, we brought. Uh, Zimbabwe, obviously a country with a wealth of uh, natural resources, uh, fertile land, and most importantly, one of the most highly educated populations on the continent. Um, I won't keep you too long, so what I'd love to do now is hand you over to the newly appointed uh, Professor Nakubi, the Finance Minister, who will introduce the rest of the uh, delegation. Thank you very much. Our colleagues, good, good afternoon. Uh, Your Excellency, President of Zimbabwe, Dimu Nangaga, welcome, sir. Thank you for finding time to grace this occasion and have a conversation uh, with, with investors. Uh, I'm Chuli Ngube. I'm the Minister of Finance uh, for Zimbabwe. And uh, I'm pleased to have been appointed. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best uh, to make sure that investors are, are happy. But more importantly, uh, I'd contribute to fixing the, the Zimbabwe economy. Um, uh, uh, the format of, the, of uh, today's uh, program is as follows. Uh, the master of ceremony is my colleague Dean from Home Exotics. And then uh, I'm going to introduce the president in a moment to give his remarks. Uh, after that, I'll fill in the gaps with the PowerPoint presentation. Let's see if that's necessary in the first place. The president usually gives very good presentations. And then after that, the, the governor of Central Bank, uh, uh, John Mangujga, uh, uh, will make, make his remarks as well, make sure that we understand what's go going on on the monetary policy front. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, what's the name again? Chris Steele. Chris, yeah. He will, uh, no, no, your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He will um, make some remarks, especially around the ARIA's clearance uh, in terms of external uh, uh, debt. And then we open up to Q&A. I promise to get you out of here in one and a half hours, if not less. Thank you. Um, <laughs> may I take this opportunity then to introduce His Excellency uh, Emerson Tambuz of Nangagwa, the President of Zimbabwe. He's an illustrious freedom fighter, you know, in Zimbabwe, delivered independence uh, in 1980. He has been in and out of, he has been in government, but in and out of different ministries uh, uh, within government, uh, justice, uh, defense, security, vice president, and now, and now our president. It is my singular honor uh, to present His Excellency, Tambuzum uh, Nangagwa, uh, to make his, uh, his remarks. Thank you, sir. May you please uh, pray take your seats. Our director of ceremonies, Zimbabwe's um, permanent representative to the United Nations in New York, Dr. Shaba. Oh, yes, okay, there you are. Then our Zimbabwe ambassador to USA, um, Temba, thank you. Honorable ministers and senior government officials who are present, organizers of this investor forum, American business persons here present, and another who may not be American. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I wish to thank you for organizing this investor forum, which provides a unique opportunity for us to interact with business people from the United States of America on investment prospects and opportunities in Zimbabwe. Let me, on the outset, state that my administration 
is determined to build a new, open, and prosperous Zimbabwe by pursuing a robust engagement and re-engagement policy with all members of the international community for mutually beneficial outcomes. As such, Zimbabwe stands ready to enhance and improve economic relations as well as welcome investments from the United States of America. Our attendance to this forum is timely as we seek to revive and rebuild our economy. Distinguished guests, Zimbabwe is on a bold course to modernize and industrialize every sphere of the country through a vibrant private sector-led economic recovery. The key tenets of our economic agenda include sweeping and comprehensive economic reforms, which foster an investment-friendly environment that promotes and protects private enterprise, improves the easy and the cost of doing business, reduces the country risk perception, creates employment, eradicates corruption, and enhances public sector accountability, transparency, and good governance. My country has a vision to become a middle income economy with a per capita income of about 3,500 US dollars. At the time I took over, on the 24th of November last year, per capita income was around 900. In eight months, it is now gone to 1,200. And by 2030, I believe we should be able to reach uh, 3,500 per capita income. With increased investment, decent jobs, broad-based empowerment, free from poverty and corruption by 2030. We are fully cognizant that foreign direct investment will play a major role in the attainment of this noble vision. Hence, we invite investors among us to you to travel this journey with us. On the political front, we successfully held our harmonized general elections as scheduled on 30th July 2018, which were peaceful, free, fair, and democratic for the first time around. We are thus determined to further entrench democratic tenets, constitutionalism, and tolerance for the good of our people to ensure sustainable economic development and prosperity for our people. Ladies and gentlemen, the growth of trade and investment is expected to drive our development agenda. Zimbabwe stands ready to enter a new era of relations with the United States of America and pursue economic cooperation and further reignite mutually beneficial trade and economic cooperation between our countries and peoples. The onus is now on the private sectors of the two countries to complement my government's efforts in this drive to grow our economy. To date, one of the key reforms that we have implemented is the amendment of the indigenization and economic empowerment. As part of our ongoing economic reform measures, we will continue to guarantee the protection of private property rights. Equally, we will observe bilateral investment promotion and protection agreements, BIPA. Let me assure you that all foreign investments will be safe in Zimbabwe, and foreign investors are free to repatriate their investment proceeds in accordance with our laws. 
My administration has designated both commodity-specific and geographic areas as special economic zones with favorable incentives for investors. My Minister of Finance and the Governor of Reserve Bank will be able to um, articulate on that issue. I'm therefore inviting American businesses to invest in these zones and will stand ready to facilitate such investment. In this regard, investors are free to leverage on Zimbabwe's resource endowments and geostrategic location to produce for Sadiq Africa and the world. The enactment of the Zimbabwe Investment and Business Facilitation Bill and establishment of one-stop shop investment center will also give greater impetus to our commitment to open up our economy. Furthermore, my government is reforming the public sector to eliminate bureaucratic red tape, bureaucratic bottlenecks, and enhance efficiency and responsiveness. We are resolved to make Zimbabwe an attractive and a safe investment destination where capital feels safe. In addition, I have committed that my administration will ensure policy clarity, consistency, transparency, and predictability. Distinguished guests, Zimbabwe is endowed with vast and untapped natural resources. And again, my ministers will elaborate. Investment opportunities exist in various areas which include agriculture, and the related agro-value chain industries, agriculture equipment, manufacturing, and irrigation development. Opportunities are also abound for American investors to participate in infrastructure development, projects in areas such as hydroelectric power, projects in dam construction, among others. You may also consider exploring business opportunities in the development and the modernization of our road, rail, and air networks, as well as information and communication technology connectivity. Our mining sector continues to present lucrative prospects, especially in gold, platinum mining, lithium, value addition, and beneficiation, among others. Zimbabwe's lithium and the coal bed methane reserves are one of the largest in Africa. Hence, opportunities exist for the exploration, exploitation, and development of green energy solutions. I've only mentioned a few, but out of the 61 known minerals, I think we have 98% of them. The tourism sector is one of the key contributors to our economy and offers diverse products. We are inviting investments towards increasing our tourism and the leisure infrastructure, such as the construction of modern hotels and golf courses. When I was in Davos, I met uh, staffers from the Trump administration. I had hoped to meet President Trump in Davos, but he delayed uh, and my, I had to leave before he arrived. And I told these people that uh, if President Trump would wish, I would offer him ground at the Victoria Falls <laughs> in uh, National Park. Uh, the, the, we have um, uh, uh, um, Wildlife National Park at Victoria Falls. But I'd offer President uh, Trump ground to build state-of-the-art golf course. So <laughs> as you play, you can be able to see the big five. <laughs> <laughs> American tourists are always welcome to visit Zimbabwe and enjoy our vast safari and hunting products. My government is also keen to modernize and expand 
our health service infrastructure. We are equally determined to resuscitate and strengthen the pharmaceutical industries and investments are invited in this respect. In addition to the above, foreign investors are invited to explore inv investing in our public entities. We are ready to consider joint ventures, public-private partnerships, build, operate on transfer investments models, among others. That will unlock economic value on a win-win basis. In all these endeavors, my government will continue to ensure the economic involvement and participation of women and youths in my country. May I conclude by inviting American businesses to also consider specific investments in any one of Zimbabwe's 10 provinces which offer diverse natural endowments in the respective provinces. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, and indeed, I repeat, Zimbabwe is open for business, and we look forward to welcoming you in my country. I thank you.